natural disasters can strike developing countries with an economic force and can roll back devel developmental gains and ex exhibit uh, the inequality. And uh, whereas the Tobago House of Assembly has deemed the Sargassum invasion across Tobago as a natural disaster, whereas the Assembly established an interagency group that assessed the immediate impact of sargassum, collaborate with stakeholders and communities, execute an appropriate response plan, and, imp and implementation of best practice. Be it resolved that this House support the Executive Council in its effort to mitigate the impact of sargassum, and be it further resolved that the central government takes, takes steps to assist the assembly in reducing the effects of sargassum invasion on local industry, such as fishing and tourism, as well as on the well-being of the population. Mr. Presiding Officer, as the people of Tobago over the age of 65 will recall, Tobago had a natural disaster in 1963 when Hurricane Flora visited and left much devastation on the island. Mr. Presiding Officer, the nat natural disaster now referred to is the destruction being wrecked on Tobago by the sargassum weed invasion. Mr. Presiding Officer, the information provided to me suggests that the first major influx of sargassum in the Caribbean occurred in 2011. Since then, it appeared to show some seasonal reoccurrence along coastal areas in Tobago on the Atlantic coast from Charlottesville Space Site to Crumb Point. It has proven, proven to be a, a nuisance to our fisher folk, coastal communities, the tourism industry, and visitors to the beaches. Mr. Presiding Officer, Sargasm is one of 150 species of seaweeds and it's commonly found along coastline in the temperate region along with other worldwide species. The common name for sargassum includes gulf weed due to the distribution by the Gulf Stream and sea holly due to the, its physical appearance. Mr. Presiding Officer, global change in, in climate high ocean currents and high nutrient input of the Caribbean are believed to have caused the sargassum to bloom within the region after it was entwined in waters from the South Atlantic. It is not clear if sargassum bloom was caused, it will occur every year but structures are currently being proposed for sargassum prediction and early warning systems. Mr. Presiding Officer, whilst the accumulation of sargassum in coastal areas around Tobago has been creating serious chaotic problems for fisher folk, beach goers, and our tourism economy, this seaweed provides many ecological benefits. These benefits include, but not limited, to offering a nursery and protection for young of ecological and marine organisms. By providing food for shorebirds and other scavengers. Mr. Presiding Officer, floating sargassum mass acts as a raft to propel the seedlings of local fish population. 
Sargassum is also used for fertilizer by farmers. Though the smell of decomposing sargassum may be intimidating, the decomposed matter is useful in the shoreline, in shoreline stabi stabilization as it acts to cement sand grains together to curtail its movement and the coastal erosion due to st storm events. We heard from the UE Vice Chancellor, Sir Hilary Beckles, who revealed that the sargassum seaweed is basically an international crisis and it is one of the greatest single threat to the Caribbean tourism industry. And as such, the international communities must step in and to provide the much needed assistance that all of us need to move this, to deal with this issue. And he also emphasized that the Caribbean needs at least 120 million US dollars and over 100,000 persons to effectively undertake maximum cleanup efforts. And so the point is, Mr. Presiding Officer, this issue is bigger than Tobago, it is bigger than Trinidad and Tobago, and we need as many hands as possible on deck. Mr. Presiding Officer, in Tobago, we have some of the best beaches in the Caribbean. Pigeon Point, Englishman's Bay, which is well known. We have Kings Bay Beach, very frequented by guests, Tor Bay Beach facilities, Pirates Bay, to name a few. And we can go on and on. And our beaches range from white sand or great sand, gray sand beaches. And they also boast or host some of the largest treasures in the Western Hemisphere, like the largest brain coral, which is located up there in Speyside. And we also have the nylon pool found at Buku. And all of those are part of our natural, natural treasures re re residing in the ocean. But more than that, Mr. Presiding Officer, quite a number of our communities are located in very close proximity to the ocean. And so it is very important that if there is any occurrence, whether natural or unnatural, affecting one of our greatest resources, we must treat with it in the best manner possible. And for that, I am very pleased with the efforts by the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, and the Environment, as well as the Office of the Chief Secretary, in ensuring that we treat, at least at the very local level, to, treat, to deal with that challenge. Mr. Presiding Officer, the sad thing is that the research is suggesting that we will continue to have this invasion due to the effects of global warming. However, it is very encouraging to know that the scientific studies are still being conducted in several jurisdictions, and those studies will determine the source of the problem and identify best practices that we can all use to al alleviate and ultimately eradicate those threats, because the solutions are what we are pondering with at this time. We know that the sargassum seaweed is a phenomenon, and it's not just a Tobago problem. Mr. Presiding Officer, the sad thing is that the research is suggesting that we will continue to have this invasion due to the effects of global warming. However, it is very encouraging to know that the scientific studies are still being conducted in several jurisdictions, and those studies will determine the source of the problem and identify best practices that we can all use to al alleviate and ultimately eradicate those threats because the solutions are what we are pondering with at this time. We know that the sargassum seaweed is a phenomenon and it's not just a Tobago problem. We also know that it is not only a regional problem because it occurs all over the Caribbean and even in the South America. And so there is need for us all to treat with this at a very large level. Mr. Presiding Officer, I also want to make the point that the sargassum can have quite a number of impact on the tourism industry. And so Mr. Adams pointed to some of it in his um, earlier discussions but you can also have the economic and environmental hardship. And so the problem for the tourism sector 
is that the unsightly piles of seaweeds and the difficulty of its removal could begin to have longer term negative economic consequences. And as I said, there are many whose livelihoods depend on tourism. It can affect the tourism product as well. We have a brand, clean, green, safe, and serene. And this really refers to ensuring that our beaches are in pristine condition. It refers to ensuring that our air is clean and very fresh, and in ensuring that our communities are well kept as much as possible. And so the impact, the smell from the sargassum seaweed can pose serious challenges to what we offer to our clients out there in terms of clean, green, safe, and serene. And then we have our guest perception and our reaction. We have heard of some um, cancellations from one or two hotels in terms of um, the, from the impact from the, the, the seaweed um, overnight. Um, and this is as a result of people not being able to access um, the beach as, as they would want to. And so we know that there can be fallouts as a result of the um, seaweed affecting the beaches as much as possible. And then, of course, we have the impact on the communities. And we saw that in Speyside, and we are seeing it in um, communities like Argyle. Um, I'm seeing some of it in, in, um, in Bell Garden as well. And quite a number of those communities on the Atlantic side are being impacted um, daily, but not in large quantities as the Speyside community. And then, of course, we have the impact on the diving sector, which is, a very, which is blooming for us at this time. Um, especially with the flight coming out from Brazil, we find quite a number of Brazilians uh, coming to Tobago now to enjoy our dive sites, and we really don't want any fallouts as a result of this um, activity or this issue, rather. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, the point has been made that we need the collaboration at all levels, local level, the residents getting involved in the process, we need the collaboration at the le national level, and most importantly, we need the collaboration at the regional and the international level. In the DIPU, we would have consented, we would have agreed with the Division of Agriculture to assist through URPs, and I heard the Secretary making reference to that. Um, of course, also collaborating with CPEP in terms of having, having daily cleaning of the beaches. Um, and of course, I want to take the opportunity to trumpet the value of having an unemployment relief program and a CPEP in Tobago. Because it is the reason, and I, I want to be going to take note, that sometimes when politicians speak and some of the allies speak about and the heaps corner of the URP program and seek to devalue the benefits and the efforts of the workers, that the assembly has an unwavering commitment towards URP towards CPEP, because we understand it's not just about employing people, it's about having reserve capacity to be able to treat with situations that arise like sargassum invasion. And the URP, the URP always is available to do things like that. We can treat with disasters when they occur. Many fire victims in Tobago we've assisted through reconstruction of their homes, through demolition of the good premises and so on assisting the elderly, the disabled, and so on in terms of the housing and providing solutions to persons who are, don't have the resources to do so. So that the involvement in the sargassum invasion is another example of that. And Mr. President, officer, it is quite ironic that we are talking about the sargassum invasion as an, as an emergency, as a natural disaster. And quite recently, we had the political leader of the Tobago Forward um, making a statement to the effect that you are, she didn't see URP as an emergency. And I say ironic, because now that we have an emergency, we have to go to URP. So the, the, in, in essence, the unemployment relief program can now play a critical role in sargassum invasion, as indeed it can play a critical role if, God forbid, we have other kinds of disasters that require that reserve capacity to come in. And, and therefore, the assembly must be commended for year after year 
setting as a priority funding for URP and funding for CBEP. One of the things that I'm, I'm concerned about is how we can find better mechanisms to predict the inflow of sargassum, especially when they come in large rafts, as happened in the case of SpaceX. Of course, we need to have the kind of access to satellite information and so on that would allow us to know in advance when we are going to have the very large influxes so we can be pre prepared beforehand to meet all the effort. And of course, that, that is going to require a kind of response mechanism and a kind of funding. And um, it is good to see that the Secretary of Finance is sitting here at the moment. Um, I know he's going to be making the arrangements that we have the kind of flexibility that will allow us to treat with that. So we need to have mechanisms to be forewarned so we can know when we have to put out the big efforts. If we do the regular daily beach cleaning and so on, we can take care of the more normal kinds of um, in, in, in invasions or the more normal kinds of um, when, we have, when we have the regular amounts of sargassum coming in. But when you have large influxes like what happened at SpaceX, we need to be pre-warned pre, pre so that we can make preparations to treat effectively with it. So we need to get those warning mechanisms in. And of course, I think critically, we have to start looking at mechanisms that can reduce the amount of sargassum that actually comes to our shore. How we can intercept in the ocean and treat it in the ocean to reduce the amounts that come in. Of course, as, as um, the Secretary for Tourism would have noted, that's a very expensive proposition. And uh, again, it requires a kind of collaboration and regional approach. Because they, when the large rafts get down to Tobago, they, they didn't just arrive here outside here, they would have passed all the way coming down. And be, and be growing at the same time. And so therefore, if we can have a kind of regional effort that is concerned, we can have the mechanisms that will contribute to less of the material reaching our shores. Throughout the Bigo, we have a significant problem of coastal erosion. And in, in the 2016 financial year, the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities as one of our, public utilities as one of our um, marquee projects will be establishing a, a coastal erosion unit staffed by specialists and, and charged to come up with designs and be able to implement critical coastal erosion initiatives in a number of areas in Tobago. Because for, for, for too long we have stood by and watched our coastline slowly recede. We have challenges throughout, throughout Tobago, some areas more worse than others. And I think the time has come for us to focus on that. I think as we treat with the sargassum, we really have to look at the holistic the holistic, or holistic marine space. We have to look at how we treat some of our nagging problems that we have had for a very long time. Because of course, this, today we, today's sargassum, in this era of climate change, who knows what may, may, be, the, may be the issue tomorrow. Because nobody expected this the sargassum a few years ago. The, the idea of having something like that would not have been in anybody's mind. So we have to start catering for new challenges because we live in an environment that is changing based upon the practices that we have carried out for over the years. And so therefore, we have to look at coastal erosion in a very holistic and important way going ahead. And we in the division want to um, combat, collaborate, we want to combine our efforts with the Division of Agriculture in ensuring that we have in place in Tobago the kind of um, program that treats our coastal erosion issues as well as our overall coastal management issues. An inspection was carried out at Speyside by the public health services. And the principal aim was to determine whether there were any environmental concerns that could impact on the health and safety of the people there in Speyside and the environs. The team consisted of eight public health inspectors and the methodology used by the team they divided the team into four groups of two inspectors and a sample of a total of 110 premises were inspected in this Bayside village. House to house visits were done and interviews of householders and conversation with residents along the roadside. Mr. Presiding Officer, most of the complaints of residents were offensive smell, stench emanating from the seaweed, discoloration of timber, change to a greenish color, change in color of jewelry,
gold and silver jewelry turned black or brown. Change in color of metals, for example, brass lock turning black. Appliances spoiled, for example, television. Itching. This was not a persistent complaint, but one resident attributed this to possible high sugar reading as he was a diabetic. There was no significant change in the fly population, so the, the seaweed didn't seem to attract flies. Mr. Presiding Officer, residents were concerned of the effect on their health as metal seemed to be affected by the gaseous emissions. Mr. Presiding Officer, the top medical complaints were headache, difficulty breathing, skin irritation, nausea, and dizziness. There were a total of 25 complaints of headaches, 18 complaints, breathing difficulties, and one out of the 17 persons complaining of skin irritation also complained of having blisters to the skin. It is noteworthy that although persons had these complaints, they did not seek medical attention. So they, you know, they were screened and assessed at home. A total of 17 persons needed to be reviewed at the local health center, and a few with health concerns not related to the sargassum seaweed were also referred for the health service. The survey showed there were no changes in health-seeking behavior within the sample population. However, many persons ex ex expressed concerns regarding the state of the appliances and the long-term effects on health of the discoloration noted within the households. Some persons were very concerned about the quality of the drinking water, especially rainwater. And those expressing concern about the drinking water have resorted to consuming boiled, bottled water. Mr. Presiding Officer, it is in this respect that we are seeking this August House to support the efforts of the Executive Council to mitigate the impact of Sargasso. We have mobilized all of the people of Speyside and their community and other communities who count on us for health care. We have utilized resources in making the environment more conducive to all stakeholders and the Tobagonians. The task force will also address the sustainable use of Sargasso seaweed gathered from the beaches in a way that is sustainable, non-threatening to the local environment, and beneficial to social and economic development of the country. Mr. Presiding Officer, in embracing the challenge of Sargasso, good communications between agencies and the private sector, with the press and with locals and visitors is essential and the private sector with the press to making sure that everyone knows where our clean beaches can be found because it isn't as if all of the beaches on the island are, you know, in, are infringed with sargassum seeds. So we must show the world that our children are enjoying the, the, our beaches in other parts of the island and give visitors the assurance that the weed is not killing us and that life goes on. Mr. Presiding Officer, we must let people know that we in Tobago are not sitting on our hands but trying to find solutions to the threat presented by the saga of weed. Mr. Presiding Officer, with the influx of seaweed threatening the island, we have called for the central government to take steps to assist the assembly in reducing the effect of sargassum seaweed on the well-being of the population and local industries such as fishing and tourism. Let me thank the Deputy Chief Secretary and Secretary of, of Tourism and Transport, 
the Secretary of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, the Secretary of Health and Social Services for the support and um, in this motion today and uh, for the way in which they articulated the views, um, the issues, and uh, to bring into perspective the need for us to really challenge this Sagazam invasion. I also want to um, personally thank the, the residents of um, Speyside for, um, for holding out, holding on, and um, till we could have um, brought some relief to them out there. The fisher folk, I empathize with them. I truly feel strongly that um, they, 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 they would have, they would have, they would have stick to the, the, the task and um, ensure that um, they, 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 they continue to apply the, the trade. Um, let me also say thanks once again to the, 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 um, some enthusiastic villagers here of um, Space Site that they started removing some of the sagas um, manually and uh, sort of give us, um, show us the way that um, uh, we, we could have um, engaged some, some, um, some workforce, manual workforce into the action, into the activity out at, um, out at, at um, Space Side. Um, I truly believe that working together, all the, the, the all, everyone in um, the populace of Tobago, um, this is a serious concern. Our fishing industry is threatened. The tourism industry, that's threatened. And we do not want to see these industry go to their knees. So with that, Mr. Presiding Officer, I am now asking that the House do um, endorse this, this, this motion today so that um, we can carry on with the work of this um, of the Executive Council of the Tobago House of Assembly. Honorable members, the question is, whereas natural disasters, whereas natural disasters can strike developing countries with an economic force that can roll back developmental gains and exacerbate inequality, and whereas the Tobago House of Assembly has deemed the Sargassum invasion across Tobago a natural disaster, and whereas the Assembly established an interagency group that assess the immediate impact of sargasm, collaborated with stakeholders and communities, executed an appropriate response plan, and implemented best practices, be it resolved that this House support the Executive Council in its effort to mitigate the impact of sargasm, and be it further resolved that the central government take steps to assist the assembly in reducing the effect of the sargasm invasion on local industries such as fishing and tourism, as well as on the well-being of the population. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is therefore carried.